Welcome to the Voice of Reason. I'm Dr. Len Saputo. I'm here with my dear friend, Francesco Garapoli. Hey, Francesco, Len. how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for today. Uh, thank you, too. Listen, we're going to be looking at, the, at, at this show as a way of presenting information that is very controversial, and, and there are lots, lots of mixed views about what's going on. The COVID-19 virus story has got so much fake news and so much real news, you, you don't know what to do. It's, it's confusing. We're going to try and unravel that as we look at this over the next several weeks. And we're going to be coming to you every day. So with a short little snippet of what's happening and what's new in the news. And uh, little by little, we're going to make a, a picture out of this, a puzzle. We're going to start with little bites, little vignettes that give you an idea of what's happening. And little by little, the vignettes are going to make a picture. And that's going to make a story. And that story is going to tell you what we think is happening in as much of, of an unbiased way as we can. Yeah. And it's, you know, the important thing for people to know here is, you know, and you're very humble, but you are a physician. So you are a physician with decades and decades of history and experience. And for me, being in the health and wellness area with Qigong and other things I have done with meditation for many decades as well, we both come together with a particular perspective. And first and foremost, we care about everyone's health and safety and, and, the, and the severity of this most curious time. And we're living through history right now. We are all living through a history that is amazing. So trust we keep that intention at the core of what we share. But we want to open minds, right? And you and I have been talking about this, Len, to, to open minds to really think. We have no specific agenda. This is about opening up to empower people. You know, we go back to 1997, Francesco. I remember at 2.30 in the morning, connecting with, for, with you for the first time. We're both up and sending emails back and forth. And since that time, we've worked together. We've created our website, drsmooter.com. And we have spent a lot of time together. Uh, trying to figure out how to make the website work and, and how to get the message across that we want to. And uh, it's been a real experience. You've become a dear friend. And the chemistry that we have, I think, is, is really going to help to explain to people what we're trying to do in, in a clear way. And especially now, testing these kinds of friendships and connections over a distance because of this idea of of having you know, physical distancing and respecting that. So we are respecting it. That's why we're doing it this way over the airwaves and not even physically together. So we are in it with everybody, but there's a, an important message here. And there's an important bit of information and shifting I think we all want to hear and need to remember. And that's what the intention of this show is and why you call it the you know, voice of reason. Well, there's we so much confusion. To... There's so much confusion out there. And, and you look at one TV channel, it tells you one thing, and you look at another, it's the other, and it gets mixed up with poli politics and economics. And what's happening is a disaster. Uh, look, we're in, we're in a lockdown. Uh, the economy is, is going down the tubes. Uh, people are starting to feel the effects of the isolation. Uh, there's a big to problem. Say nothing of, yeah, and, and the economy, we're watching. I, I just heard a friend yesterday, Friday, I just got fired, he said. Oh. No notice. So you think of the level of stress. If, if I'm one degree separation from these kinds of stories, it's happening everywhere. There are millions of people that have been laid off that are trying to, I mean, they're going to lose their home. You know, Americans, a lot of the time are living month to month. And if you if things don't go right and you're, and you're out of work for three months, not only you lose your health insurance, but you lose your home and you can become homeless. The, the, the effect that has is, is fantastic. And to do a lockdown is incredible. When you look at this COVID virus, is it really that big a deal? And the answer is it's getting bigger every day. We've now got 10,000 deaths and you don't ever, in, in this country, and you don't want to sneeze at that. That's for sure. But oh, you put it in the perspective of the number of deaths there are from other things, and, and this is not that big. There are about seven or 8,000 deaths every day in the United States. You know, people, they get old. There's a lifespan. You, right. You're born, you, you live your life, you die. And that's how many people come in and come out. And that, that number of people hasn't budged much over the last three or four months. It's fairly steady. 
And it just points out to how this thing has developed. You go back to Wuhan in China, you know, they've got two or three million deaths from pneumonia every year in China. Two or three million. That's, that's average and normal year after year. Right. And, and so it's a, it's a city of 11 million people, Wuhan. You know, I've been there. I, I, you know, you, we have to start seeing the perspective, the real perspective here. Right. There were 3,500 deaths in Wuhan from pneumonia. What is, how does that stack up to 3 million? It's like, are the priorities mixed up and you're going to shut down a town for that? And you're going to have martial law for that, which is coming to this country as well? We got a problem because the perspective isn't right. Yeah. It's, you know, you're a physician and I, I read a lot of medical work. I went to pre-med, you know, of course, as you know. We, we have never really tested to see if people who have died in these past years really had a coronavirus. We've known about coronavirus since the 1950s. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, so, right, so we've never really seen all these 25,000 to 60,000 people a year who die in the United States alone. We've never really marked it as a coronavirus. We just said they died of, of pneumonia, virus. Of pneumonia. pneumonia. That's right. So, well, we, that's true. And we have to find a way to look at the real numbers and we don't have them. We don't know how many people have the virus. I mean, that's a big guess. And when you, when you don't know the total number of people and it's much smaller than you think, then the mortality rates seem like they're high. And a lot of the time they think it's three or 4%, but I don't think you're looking at maybe a 10th of the number of people who have this cold that for old people and people who have other kinds of health conditions, it becomes a big problem. And, and that's uh, speeding up the dying process for those people. Uh, that's, those, are, those are big numbers. And then how many people are actually dying from it? As you said, uh, we don't really know that. And, and, there are, and the numbers are not reliable because they're dying from all kinds of things. And they're calling it what? They're calling it the COVID-19 virus, just like they did with SARS, with the influenza virus of 2009. And with MERS. Exactly. So where do you get good information? And when you don't have good information, your fear goes up because you're hearing things from so many different directions. And we know from the National Institutes of Health research for years that stress is related to 70% or more of disease, probably a much higher number than that, it's of all involved. kinds of disease. Yeah. So, so when we're starting to see the stress come up in people worrying about the economy, worrying about these facts that are so disparate. We're starting to see an issue in people that we know that when the stress goes up, the cortisol levels go up and our immune system starts goes to drop. down. Yeah. Over the short term, it, it, it actually improves. But as soon as you have this stress for more than a couple of weeks or a month, things just fall apart. And the effects of the isolation are huge. You're looking at people who get depressed, uh, their immune systems go down from that. And uh, you just don't function well. Uh, suicide rate goes up. Uh, families are disintegrating sometimes in that setting. And how many people are just alone by themselves in their home, watching exactly. TV all day? If they don't have a job, have nowhere to go. They're about to lose their home. It's a pretty sad scenario. So, so there's the question that I ask you as a doctor, you know, where is that balance between, yes, we want to be safe and we want to do the right thing to to flatten this curve which i don't really like that term but i don't flatten either. this curve but um it versus creating more of a situation that is actually detrimental well that's right it's probably if we had done nothing i mean how are we going to get herd immunity you know that's one of the things that we talk about mm -hmm. herd immunity is means that after the a number of, if you get 90% of the population exposed to the virus, then it seems to go away. Why it does, nobody really knows, but, but that's what it does. Now, if, you, if you're gonna isolate people and people aren't gonna get the infection, what's gonna happen when you go back? It's the same old thing. And that's why countries like Sweden and oh, Denmark- so Perfect example, Sweden, yes. Yeah, they're just letting it go. And, and what are the people from Sweden are saying? We don't want to quarantine people. What we want is adults who can make adult decisions. And if you're right. sick, for God's sakes, don't go to work. You know, mm -hmm. isolate yourself. That makes a lot more sense. And if you're going to have a quarantine of some kind, uh, you probably should just be doing it for people who are 
the ones that are the most vulnerable. Those are the people that are over the age of 65. And those are people with all kinds of chronic diseases. And if you did that, the workforce, which is under the age of 60 for the most part, can go back to work and it doesn't have to crash the economy and be a lot more stability uh, uh, economically for everybody. Right. And people can go to work with good, good hygiene and good ethics and good, sure. you know, best practices sure. to prevent which we know. And we, we, we've heard the best of the, of the um, infectious disease doctors around the world. My, my friend, a good friend of mine runs Poland's infectious disease. He's wow. the head physician for all the country. Uh -huh. Follow, follow the steps and you have reduced most of the problem right, right. For, for spreading. But it doesn't mean it doesn't mean now shut down a whole business. It means have that business run intelligently. Right. Well, listen, it's been good to talk with you, Francesco. And we're going to have shows every day that talk a little bit more. We'll have vignettes that talk about what the COVID virus is doing and how we can piece together this puzzle so we can we can cut through the confusion and try to understand what's happening and then do the right thing. We can't wait until there's a disaster. And, and everything falls apart. So onward and upward, the voice of reason tomorrow. Thank you, Len. Thank you.